Hello there! It has been a while, but we are back with a brand new video. Do you have trouble making the development team understand the list of things the system should do and also in what order it has to be done? Then this is the video for you. In this video, we are going to cover the concept of activity diagram, another skill to add to your expanding BA toolkit. Let's get started. As the name suggests, activity diagram is a type of diagram. You may have heard, a picture is worth a thousand words. Activity diagram is a type of UML diagram and is a visual model showing the sequential flow of activities to achieve an outcome. It is usually used as a graphical representation for a specific use case or a scenario. It can also be a supporting document for a user story if being used in the Agile context. As always, let us use a simple case study and draw an activity diagram for that. James is a BA working with a client running a restaurant called The Vacan Gardens. The client is looking for a mobile app which will allow their customers to book a table. James is going to draw an activity diagram for listing the activities involved and their sequence for the table booking use case. Let's see how he does that. To simplify, an activity diagram has six key components. As mentioned in our case study, James is going to document the activities for table booking and the flow using an activity diagram. We had covered how to draw a use case diagram in one of our earlier videos and one of the use case was table booking and this activity diagram is based on it. You can check the use case diagram video using the link in the description box if you want to learn more about the use case diagrams. Okay, coming back to the activity diagram. Let's get started with our first component, swim lanes, which help to separate the activities clearly between the customer and the system, which help to easily visualize what activities will be performed by the customer and what will be the activities done by the system. The next component is the start icon. It is used to indicate the starting point and is usually indicated by a black circle as shown. The third component is the activity box which indicates the activity. The first activity on the list is the customer clicking the book table button which will prompt the booking system to display the screen asking the customer to enter the date and number of guests. Then customer enters their preferred date and number of guests. Let's say 10th May for 5 number of guests and then click on submit. The next activity is that the system would need to check for the table availability for that date for the mentioned number of guests which brings us to the component number 4, a decision box. If the table is not available, then system should display a message indicating table is not available which will terminate the activity flow indicated by the next component in our list, number 5. If table is available, then all the available time slots are displayed to the customer for selection like 12.30, 1.30, 2.30 and so on. Customer clicks on the preferred time slot, then the system needs to book the table on the back end and once that is done, we have the final component, component number 6, uh, the horizontal bar. We have two types. The first one here is called as fork which indicates splitting of the flow and to showcase the parallel activities like the ones listed below. Sending SMS to the customer's registered mobile number with booking confirmation. Email to the customer's registered email for confirmation and making the booking activity on the customer's home page in the app so that in case if the customer wants to amend, they can view and amend easily. Once all the three activities are completed, then we have another horizontal bar. That is the second type and this is to indicate the joining back of the flow and the next activity will only be done if all the three parallel activities are completed. 
Once all the parallel activities are completed, then booking confirmed is displayed to the customer on screen, bringing an end to this use case. We can still have few more activities listed to make this in depth. I restrict it to fit on a single page PPT. Hope you find this technique useful and start using it in your next use case or user story where you want to represent the activity flow. Did you enjoy the video? If so, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you have not already done so. Also, click on the like button to show your support and also help us to share this video with your friends who may find this useful. See you in the next video.